Welcome home and happy Mother's Day. Happy, oh, come on, oh, do, do a little bit of that, right? Happy Mother's Day. Uh, so glad to have everybody here today. Again, the families, the kids, so thankful for all of them. If you're new, if this is your first time, we just want to say welcome home. We're glad to have you with us today. We're continuing in our series. This is week two in our series titled, Always Never, Unchanging Promises for an Uncertain Future. Always Never. And right, don't we need promises that we can cling to? Promises that we can anchor ourselves to, whether it's the chaos of our present or the chaos of an uncertain future, right? Those are what the promises of God are meant to be, our anchors that we can cling to. I think about years ago, Julie and I, we were in a season where we just camped our brains out with our kids. Everybody was little and it was awesome. We were up at Teton National Park and, and we were camping up there and one day we decided to go kind of wade in the Snake River. It was right behind our campsite. And so we made our way out there and we're on the sandbar and we're kind, of, we're kind of stretched out and everybody's just having a great time. And I look up river and our youngest, Zach, who was about four at the time, he'd gotten off the sandbar and gone into the deep waters. And it was like a bobber on a fishing line. He's going under and under and under, right, he's drowning. And he's just flailing about, right, he's, he's flailing his arm looking for anything he can cling to, anything he can anchor himself to, because that's what we do when we're drowning. And I couldn't get to him fast enough, and I saw Zion, our middle son, and I said, Zion, go to your brother. And Zion went over to him, and Zach just grabbed hold and held him tight, knowing, right, intuitively, Zion is anchored, he has secure footing. And then they made their way to me and and the three of them, right? We just kind of hung on to each other. The two of them trusting that their father was anchored for them. And that's what the promises of God are meant to be in our lives, right? That our father in heaven, right, puts those there so we can anchor ourselves to, right? The, The chaos of our present or the chaos of an uncertain future we can cling to. Last week, we looked at this, this idea Right, that a lot of times we can feel alone, but feeling something doesn't make it true. What's true is the promise of God that says, I am with you always to the very end of the age. We're gonna look at another promise of God here today, but before we get to the promise, I wanna look at a problem. Because I believe the struggles of daily life leave us feeling often forgotten. Don't you feel like that? Just the craziness, the struggles, everything swirling around you, the chaos of now, the uncertainty of the future, right? It leaves you feeling forgotten. It seems like everybody else has somebody paying attention to them, but me, but you. We can feel it personally. We can feel it relationally. You can feel it right financially. You can look around and go, why? Everybody else seems to be getting promoted. Everybody else seems to be making more money, but I'm overlooked. God is clearly not aware of what's going in my life because I'm drowning in debt. No one sees me. Nobody remembers me. God himself has forgotten me. Leading to even existential questions, right? When you feel always forgotten, then you begin to ask, who am I? Why does any of this matter? Is there a point to my life at all if no one even remembers me? You see, feeling forgotten leaves us held down and held back from the life of purpose we were meant for. Held down and held back. That's what feeling forgotten does. Right? It holds us down by the lie that we don't matter. By the lie that no one cares. Which leads to depression and hopelessness. It holds us back from fulfilling our purpose. See, you and I, we have a purpose and one of our key purposes is to serve and meet the needs of others and yet the lie that we are forgotten holds us back from that because what's the point in helping others when it feels like nobody even knows we exist? When it feels like even God has forgotten us. And I don't know everybody's story in here, but there's enough moms in here, there's enough people in here that I know that many of you are in a season right now where you feel forgotten. Even those watching us online, you're in a season 
where the chaos of today and the uncertainties of future are just shouting at you that no one remembers you, nobody cares, and that God himself has forgotten you. I want to tell you if that's you today, man, today is your day. This is the right day. You're not here by accident. If you feel forgotten, I also want to tell you, man, my wife and I have been there. I think over 16 years ago, I was at this large church and, and things began to be pretty dysfunctional and just felt God leading me to. And so I resigned from there. And I had several contacts. And, and, and in my mind, I'm like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to resign here and I'm just going to step into another ministry job. This is just going to be a smooth transition. Ended up in being almost 10 months of unemployment. Can I just tell you that when you're completely unemployed, how quick your savings just disappears? particularly when you have three toddlers at the same time, right? And so all of this starts to snowball in mine and Julie's life, just feeling forgotten. God, I, I was on, right? That was the right thing to do for our family. And yet, Brett, nothing's happened. Do you remember? Are you seeing this, God? And then, because of God's great sense of humor, right? We have these three little, three toddlers. Oh, and then your wife's going to get pregnant because you have no job and no health insurance. Yay! <laughs> I mean, just, right, another one. Oh, God, are you paying attention? Oh, and then on top of that, my dad, his cancer, it escapes out of his prostate, heads to his bones, to his spine, and to his brain stem, and he's falling off the cliff of health and dying quickly. Oh, and then because money keeps flying out, we have to sell our house. Literally homeless, jobless, my dad's dying. My wife is eight months pregnant. I got three toddlers and a dog and we're packing everything up to go move into my dying father's basement. It was bleak and everything felt like God had forgotten us. And Julie tells the story. She's climbing into the minivan, right? All eight months pregnant of her and three toddlers and a dog and she's driving to my parents' house and she says, God, I know I need to have faith, but I need you to show up. I need you to show us that you have not forgotten us. Julie and I have been there. And the truth is when you go to God's word, man, countless people, even entire nations have felt the same. Again, I just wanna tell you, if you feel forgotten in your own life, today is your day. So many of us have been there. Many of us are there right now. Today is your day. We're going to go to Isaiah 49, 14 through 16. We're going to kind of anchor ourselves into this passage and into this promise of God. I believe this passage is for you today. Again, whether you're watching online or here in the room. So we're going to pick it up, verse 14. But Zion said, pause there for a minute. So Zion, it's not a, they're not using it like a first name. No, this is, Zion is representing the entire nation. It is though the entire nation is now saying the following, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. The entire nation, as with one voice crying out, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. And you say, well, why? Why are they saying that? Because this is written during the time of the Babylonian captivity. A little background. Nation of Babylon had invaded Israel. Came upon Jerusalem. Sacked the city. Tore their walls down. Even tore down the very temple of God itself. Ripped these people away from their homes. Away from their land. Away from the temple which represented their core identity as a people. Scooped them all up. Brought them into Babylon. Slavery. Indentured servitude. Everything they had depended on. Everything they had anchored themselves to in their lives. Stripped from them. Leaving them feeling abandoned. And forgotten. And into this they cry out. The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. And those words, powerful in English, in English, but even deeper in the Hebrew, forsaken their meaning, the Lord has left me behind. He's abandoned me. He's neglected me. He has deserted me. And forgotten. To be oblivious of. Right? Forgotten there in the Hebrew means literally 
They're crying out because they believe that their, that their existence, right, the very memory of themselves have been wiped off the mind of God because if God doesn't care for me, he must then just not even know me. Forsaken and forgotten. Haven't we all cried out at different times like this? Why, God, have you neglected and abandoned me? Why, God, do you treat me like I don't exist? Why, God, are you so obviously oblivious to all the things that are happening in my life? Why, God, have you forsaken and forgot me? Oh, my word, I connect to those, to those words. But now hear the response of God. He says, can a mother forget the baby at her breast? and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, hear this, I will not forget you. Hear this, I will not forget you. Again, whatever season you're in, if you're in that season where you are feeling forgotten, would you hear these words spoken not to just some ancient people in an ancient time, in an ancient land, no, spoken to you because this is a promise of God unchanging in its nature. No matter the ways of your life, no matter the chaos of your present or the uncertainties of your future, God looks at you and he says, I will not forget you. That is his promise that we can cling to and anchor ourselves to. You know, Julie and I, back to that story 16 years ago, she cried out, God, I need you to show us that you have not forgotten us. And what we didn't know, what we never know is the future. And what we didn't know is that within two months, he would make his care so personal and powerful in our lives. Just within eight weeks, Julie gives birth to a beautiful baby boy, healthy and strong. Within those eight weeks, my father, because of cancer, finally stripping the last degrees of pride out of his life, comes to believe and receive Jesus as Lord. Within eight weeks, right, he is welcomed into heaven as he passes from this earth. And within eight weeks, we are packing that same junk up into another U-Haul because God has provided a job and a new home in Denver, Colorado, all within eight weeks. Because God told us and promised us, I will not forget you. We just didn't know the future. He goes on. He says, see, I have engraved you on the palms of my hand. That word see, behold, it's actually a legal term. It means let me lay out my case, God says. Allow me to present the evidence that will prove to you that no matter how much you may feel forgotten, I actually have not forgotten you. And he says, I have engraved you in my hands. And that word engraved, it's the same word to describe how God carved and etched the law of the Lord into the tablets of Moses. God is saying to you and to me, I have etched you indelibly for all time into the palms of my hand. Though everything else in your life would have you believe otherwise, believe this promise. The borders of your life, the borders, the walls of your life are ever before me now and for all time because I will not forget you. I will not forget you. Friends, you, me, we are not forgotten though it may feel like it. Though everything around us tries to convince us that we are, the truth that stands against that lie is that our lives now and for all time are etched, engraved into the very hands of the God of creation who loves you, sees you, knows you, and remains so for you. Because the truth remains. We are always, never, forgotten by God. 
We are always never forgotten by God. That is the promise to cling to. Again, regardless of the chaos of your present or the uncertainty of your future, this is that promise. If you feel like Zach, four years old, drowning, flailing, looking for anything, cling to this promise. Anchor yourself to it. We are never, we are always never forgotten by God. Never and that when we anchor ourselves to that, there is an empowerment that comes to that, an encouragement that releases us. The first thing it allows us to do is to rise up. It allows us to rise up because I think too often, right, when you feel consistently forgotten, then what's the point? Why struggle? Why move on? Just sit back and let the life, let life burn. Who cares anyway? No. This promise gives us the, the power and the energy to rise up. I think about Jeremy and Shauna Qualabom. Jeremy's our campus pastor over in Arvada. And he shared, as we we're working on this message, they were going through a season of infertility and, and wrestling with adoption and everything felt overwhelming. They completely felt forgotten and it just meant they did nothing then. Because why do anything? It doesn't matter. God's forgotten us. And he began to think and process and reflect on this passage and others reminding themselves, no, that's not true. And so step by step, they began to rise up. They began to move forward and trust that this promise was true. And now here we are 19, 20 years later, and they have two beautiful daughters, Tatiana and Kira, as they rose up, trusting to God was always never going to forget them. Reminds me of Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, right? Hope there, meaning those who actively believe in, who anticipate, who expect the promises of God to be true and anchor themselves to them, they will then renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So rise up, get going, do the thing. Because God always, never forgets you. And then once you begin to rise up, then reach out. Then reach out. See, here's an interesting irony. We anchor ourselves to the truth that we are not forgotten when we help others see the same truth. Right again, right? We talked about at the beginning, feeling forgotten holds you down and holds you back. And it holds you back from serving others. That's your purpose. And it's also as we serve others that God proves his faithfulness in our lives. Oh, as I serve others, I'm remembered that God continues to serve and sees me. I think about 1 John, 1 John 4, 11. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Right, it's healing. And honestly, as a pastor, I got this wrong. 16 years ago, I gave my mom really bad advice. My dad had just passed away. And my mom is a servant at heart. She just gives constantly all the time, serving at her church and her community, just constantly doing. And I remember saying to my mom, mom, why don't you take a season off? Why don't you just stop? And again, there's, there's a healthy place for rest and, and having good healthy rhythms. But mom looked at me, she goes, oh no, I, I can't do that. I'm reminded that God has not forgotten me as I help others and serve them and help them be remembered that they are not forgotten. Right, there's a freedom that comes up. Right, when we're anchored to this promise, we are always never forgotten by God. We can rise up and we can reach out. Maybe it's joining the welcome team. Right, those faces that just greet you with a hand, a smile, a hot cup of coffee, praise God. Right, maybe that's what you can offer. Maybe it's, the, maybe it's kids' church, right? We're in the process of building out the very last space we can for kids because we're overflowing. Because as you see, we're really growing the church in a healthy way. I'll just let that marinate. Maybe you need to join kids' church. Maybe it's a missions trip. Can I just tell you that we're sending 50 people already to an international mission this year alone? We're on pace. We're not even done. Yes, give it up. for That's, that's huge. Right? We're on pace. Man, we're not even done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess we're going to send over 60 people who are going to experience God in an international cross-cultural way. I'm going to be leading a team the end of September. I'm looking for three or four men 
three or four men with some skills because I don't have many. I basically dig and carry heavy things. That's my skill set. Right, I'm, I'm looking for three or four guys to go with me to Greece as we come alongside one heart and help Muslim refugees in Athens, Greece. We just signed up for that. We got teams going to Thailand, Mexico, right, Estonia. We're doing those things. Maybe you need to join one of those teams. Maybe that's what it looks like to reach out. Maybe it's helping that mom sitting next to you at soccer practice. Maybe reaching out looks like helping that neighbor you know is struggling and they feel forgotten. And you can help prove to them that they are not and that they are not forgotten by God. You see, though the struggles of life lead us to believe otherwise, we are always never forgotten by God. Now, I get it. That sounds like a great idea in theory. But I was thinking about as I put this message together, I go, we got to put some meat on this bone, if you will, right? To maybe hear from somebody other than the pastor whose job it is to say this stuff. And so I want to welcome Danny Frost and Tammy Masters. Ladies, would you, would you join me on stage? <laughs> keep, it, keep it coming. Keep it coming for them. I, I want to welcome these ladies. So, Danny, welcome. Thank you, Mike, for you right there. Tammy, welcome. Happy Mother's Day, ladies. Uh, so, these ladies, they're part of the Harbor Church family, and we talk about this idea of right, rising up and reaching out. I, I couldn't get away. I kept coming back to actually both of these women because both of these mimi, women are part of running the Haven Clothing Ministry, a ministry that is at the Arvada campus, runs out of there. But, but tell us about, uh, before we get into that, right, so many good questions. Tell us about Haven. Uh, so Haven is a nonprofit, like you said, run out of Arvada campus right now. And we provide care packages to children entering foster care. And those include new clothes, um, comfort items like stuffies and blankets and hygiene supplies and a Bible. And we also provide a meal for the whole family and a gift bag for foster parents with like a coffee gift card, some resources and some other encouraging items. Anything you'd add to that, Tammy? Uh, we usually deliver within a 20 mile radius from the Arvada campus and we try to get our packages out within 24 to 48 hours. That, that's incredible. And so what happens, right? So, so Tammy and Danny, they invited the staff into kind of the, the room that we have there over the Arvada campus, and they kind of gave us a tour. And they have an inventory system, and really they have dialed this thing in really well. So the kids, right, family, specific gender, specific age, all the stuff that goes into a bag, and then to have somebody show up at your house and go, here. And all of it, as I, as I heard them talk about this ministry, it just felt right. The whole purpose was to help these foster families not feel forgotten, right? So tell, what are some of the stories that, that you've seen from people as they come to the door and they, they present, right, present the stuff that we've provided? I think Tammy has a really great story, actually, of when she delivered a bag. Go ahead. <clears throat> um, I have two very brief stories. Um, the first time that I went out, there was a lady who had a preschooler whose sibling had passed away from violence. And so she was super grateful that she was able to love on, these, on, on this young man. And she was so overwhelmed by the blessing of it all. Um, she really was super appreciative. I was able to pray with her in the parking lot <laughs> while she was dropping things off. And then the second package, um, this, this person had received multiple children. So she only wanted a few packages from us, but when we got there, I dropped it off. And she texted and she said, this is too much. This is way too generous. And I said, absolutely not. We're so grateful for what you do and it's our pleasure. So those mm. are great stories. Mm. I love that. So give us a little insight. Why is it so easy for these families to feel forgotten? Well, I think one reason is um, People see foster parents as making a choice, and they do, but um, when someone's made a choice and signed up to be part of something, it can be hard to step forward and offer them help because you just assume sometimes, well, they knew what they were getting into. They knew this was going to be hard. Um, so it's, they tend to get forgotten about in that sense. And also, I think people don't understand how to help. They don't know what the family needs. They don't, maybe not have any experience with foster parenting 
or foster children in general. So um, just not knowing what to ask for can be hard. Mm. <clears throat> so before I was a stay-at-home mom and homeschooler, um, I was a foster care worker and a CPS worker, I investigated abuse and neglect, worked in hospitals with uh, complicated trauma, mostly foster kids. So. Uh, over the years, and then just some of the foster parents I have known, I think the big part about being forgotten um, really includes just, it can be really overwhelming being on the front lines. Um, foster children, they, are, they can be traumatized, neglect, changes your brain chemistry. Uh, it changes where you're just constantly feeling like you're in a war every day, and foster parents um, get a little emotional. <laughs> foster parents deal with that and they're there and sometimes it's hard and sometimes foster parents make mistakes you see lots of stories of where foster parents and have made mistakes but it is really hard and it's really easy to just have things overlooked when you have children uh, when people ask you uh, where does your child come from if they don't look like you it's hard situations um, and so I think sometimes we don't like to talk about this hardness so it's really easy to pretend and to not address it especially when people are having a hard time but this is why I feel passionate about and what we do because without foster parents we would not have kids being taken care of. A system cannot do it. It is not capable of taking care of children. Foster parents, they make the world go round for our children. And I super appreciate all of the hard work that they do, all of the unspokens, the days that they cry, the days that they're triggered because it's hard being in those situations. You can get triggered. You're at the end of the day, you're like, am I seen? Does anybody know when your kid is acting out in public? and you get judged for that sometimes, it's super hard. And I just really want the foster parents known that you are seen, you are loved, and as much as Danny and I can do it, we are here for you. <laughs> oh, end. man. Okay, again, please, give it up. Um, I so enjoy, so where their office and where the, the room is, is it's just kind of around the corner from my office, and, and Danny's in there, or Tammy's in there, they bring their kids, they're in there, and to just know that they are working hard, right? Literally, they're rising up and reaching out to help families not feel forgotten. And so thank you, ladies, so much. You do that so well. I, I do. I walk by there. I'm just amazed. And, and we're just so blessed that we can provide a place and help connect to these families that circumstantially, right, things are pretty overwhelming. And so how do people get connected, right, Danny? How, how would they help somebody hears this today, again, whether they're watching online or, or here in the room, how do they respond to this? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have a lot of information on our website and our social media pages, but um, really tangibly right now are in need of people who are available during the week, during the day, who can deliver care packages. Um, it's really hard with a small group of volunteers um, to meet all the needs, to drive all over town, to pack, especially Tammy and I both are homeschool moms, so we have our hands full too during the week, so balancing that. Um, and also um, just financial support monthly is really important. Um, the, the bags, the meals, the foster parent items, um, that's a value of over about $300. So one delivery can cost a lot financially. So just keeping our shelves stocked and keeping us running, that's really important too. Um, do you have anything else to add to that? I'm sure there's more. I don't think so. Just, we always are in need of drivers. I just want to plug that in. <laughs> oh man, and what a great thing to show up. I mean, you get to be Santa. Yeah. Right? You get to be Santa for that family at their doorstep, literally tangibly helping them know that they are not forgotten. Where can they go if they want to find more information? Yeah, so our social media pages are Haven Clothing Denver, and um, our website is havenclothingdenver.com, and there's a link on there, right, for volunteer interest, and there's a link on there to donate. Um, so all of that's pretty simple and easy to find on our pages. That's awesome. Thank you, ladies. So today's Mother's Day. Again, happy Mother's Day. Now you're saying, I, I met with the ladies this week, and I said, you're, you're in from a room of parents, of individuals, folks watching online, where we talked this idea that that the promise is that we are always never forgotten by God, right? For you ladies, some of that has meant you're gonna rise up and reach out, get involved in Haven Clothing, get involved in foster care families, seeing them, helping them not feel forgotten. 
Danny, what would you say to that mom, to that dad, to, to anybody sitting here today on that promise that they are not forgotten? I would just say that you're not alone. Um, we've all been there. I know I've been in a, a deep, dark place, in a pit, um, where you just, you really do feel forgotten. You feel like you're the only one that feels that way. Um, and just clinging to the truth that Joel spoke about today in Isaiah, that God will not forget you. Your name is written on his hands. And sometimes it takes a conscious choice a real hard effort to step out, to make that first step to reach out to others. That might be something as simple as giving someone a smile. It might be something big like volunteering with Haven, but whatever you find that um, reaching out to be for you, sometimes you just have to make that choice and step out and start to make that real for yourself that you are not forgotten. Mm. So well said, Danny. Tammy. Yeah, so um, I knew you were going to ask this question, <laughs> and um, I was praying about what to say, what would I have to say, and it really ties in well to what you preached on about not being forgotten, because sometimes Mother's Day can be really complicated for people, um, and I know that I have a complicated relationship with Mother's Day, because I have a complicated relationship with my mother, which has caused me to have complicated feelings towards my own motherhood, because sometimes you walk in wondering, why wasn't I good enough? And so then you walk into other relationships, especially with your own children, why wasn't I good enough? And am I good enough? And so I remember a couple of years ago, I went into just experiencing the bankruptcy of my own motherhood and really crying out to God. And I remember in that moment of crying out, because uh, it turns out you can't really give a whole lot if you haven't received it. Mm. As I began a healing journey with the Lord, he asked me and he, he, he told me, you have some choices here. You can take the narrow path that I'm offering you because anything that you do with the Lord, you're building something and that never ever comes cheaply. Mm. Um, and it costs you something. It costs pride, it costs humbleness, and it costs you a willingness to ask to forgive others and ask for forgiveness when you miss the mark. And I remember as, he was, as we were talking, he said to me, I will redeem your family line if you will break the cycle of this. Mm. And he showed me that he would redeem things going up my family line and especially going down the family line. And so for those out there who have complicated relationships with your mother, I really want to encourage you that we're made in the image of God, which means that we're made both male and female. And we know Father God so well. But do you know that God can also be a mother if, he's, if we're created in his image? And whatever you have missed out on, I can assure you, God is very capable of filling in those needs and to mother you and teach you how to be a good mother. Mm. I am evident of that. Um, it's hard. It's not a sitcom. It may not be done in the end of 30 minutes. We love these like overcoming stories. I'm in the middle of my story. I'm in the middle of a story with my own mother. But to be able to choose to be a cycle breaker is hard. But I can tell you right now, you have a God who will give you wisdom. You have a God who will walk through. And every time you fail, the Lord will pick you up and dust you off. And you will walk together to have a redemption story in your own families. And I am living proof. And I have been able to see the beauty and the pain of restoration in all of my family relationships. Mm. Not perfect, but it's beautiful. Mm. So I just want to encourage you on that. It's okay to mourn. It's okay to grieve. That's okay for today. You don't have to bright side anything if this is a hard day for you. Mm. Thank you, ladies, so much for sharing your hearts. Thank you, ladies. Uh, again, appreciate it so much. Uh, Danny, before we leave, again, remind them, where can they go? Are we back on? There okay, thank you. <laughs> um, HavenClothingDenver.com and our social media is our Haven Clothing Denver. Excellent. Thank you, ladies, so much for being here today.
I'm gonna invite the band to come back up and we're gonna, we're gonna wrap up in some more music here this morning. Also, would you stand with me? They're gonna come up. They're gonna kind of move some of this stuff around you. We've heard a lot. You've heard me talk. You've heard the ladies talk. Man, I hope you hear this. I hope you hear this promise. Right, the promise when we looked to Isaiah 49, the promise that God says to the Israelites, to an entire nation, is the same promise that he says to Julie and I 16 years ago when my wife is crying out, God, I need you to show us that you've not forgotten us. It's the same promise lived out through the lives of Danny and Tammy, as they help foster care families who are crying out, God, do you see us? God, have you forgotten us? And it's the same promise to each and every one of you, that mom, that dad, that individual, that man, that woman, you in the midst of your chaotic now and your uncertain future, that God sees you, knows you, and he says, he promises you, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you I have etched you. I have indelibly marked you on the very palms of my hands, the borders of your life, the peaks, the valleys, the ebbs, the flows. God promises are ever, always before me, now and for all time. That promise spoken then is just as true for you, for me today. And so I invite you, we're gonna go into this song. We're gonna wrap up the service. We still got a couple things we're gonna do. We're gonna surprise some moms. But would you take the opportunity during this song, man, to reflect on that promise in your life that as you flail about drowning at times, would you grab hold of it, anchor yourself to it, though everything around you would tell you otherwise, would you claim the promise that you are always never forgotten by God. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you that we can trust in your promises, that they are true and that we can cling to them. In Jesus' name, amen.